Hi guys, Mr. Two Rats here. Welcome back once again to the Doki Doki Literature Club. What's this? Two Doki Doki videos in one day? Hmm. Mr. Two Hatch, you're getting really good at your timekeeping. This will probably be the only two videos I put up for the next three weeks, but you know, let's give it a shot. So, um, the last time we left off, Yuri caught us uh, snaking glances. I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't guess uh, at to what we were sneaking the glances at, but let's carry on. She sneaks another glance at me, and our eyes meet for a split second. And dot dot dot. But that only makes her hide her face deeper in her book. Sorry, I was just spacing out. I'm out of this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh, it's fine. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... That's the book you gave me, right? Mm-hmm. I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. Just curious, how come you two, you have two... Just curious, how come you have two copies of the same book? Ah... Uh, well, when I stopped at the bookstore yesterday. Uh, wait, that's not what I meant. That's not what I meant at all. I, I completely didn't buy that book just to give it to you. I mean, I, I just happened to buy two of them. Ah, oh, I see. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decided to let it go. <coughs> oh, God. Excuse me. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What's it about, anyway? Well... Hmm... Yuri closes the book and scans her eyes over the back. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous looking eye symbol in the front cover. Illuminati. Alright. I just wanted to make sure I didn't accidentally give up, give anything away. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long lost younger sister. But as soon as she does, her life gets really strange. She is targeted by these people who escape from a human experiment prison. And while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships, and her life starts to fall apart. That's kind of... It's kind of dark, isn't it? <laughs> I was about to say that. You made it sound like it was going to be a nice story, so that dark, so that dark turn come from nowhere. <laughs> you gently giggles all of a sudden. Are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Dob? No, it's not that. I mean, I could definitely enjoy those kinds of stories, just don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri is into these things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that those kinds of stories, they challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals or their own philosophy that they believe in. Then suddenly, when you fall... When you you thought you related to the protagonist. They made out to be the naive one for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. I'm... I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologise. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts, I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So... I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It is a literature club after all. Uh, that's... Well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it right. You... You don't have to. <laughs> what are you saying? Just a moment ago, you said you were looking forward to it. Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieve the book that I put into my bag. Alright, it's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Uh, yeah. Are you sure? You don't seem, you seem a little apprehensive. That's, I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Oh, alright. I open a book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel a presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not that particularly bad thing. Maybe a little bit distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realise that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. Looks like she's reading from my book instead. Sorry. No, it's just... 
Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I, I do? I must be Canadian. <laughs> Sorry. If, any, if anyone from Canada's watching this, I do apologize. I don't really mean to. Sorry. She said it again. I mean... Ah ha ha ha. Here, this should work, right? I slam my desk up, at, up until it's against Yuri's and hold my bookmark between the two of them. Ah. I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own coffee. Once we each lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold the book open. Ah, uh, I guess that makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. Yeah. Aw, she's blushing. Aw, look at her. She's blushing. You can't see my mouse, but I'm currently poking her in an eyeball. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and her forefinger. Ah. Uh. I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way, I turn a book and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Yeah? To turn the page. Ah, oh, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second, staring at your face. I glance over Yuri's face again and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Uh, that's okay. You're not as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a little bit longer. It's probably the least I can do, since you've been so patient with me. Y yeah, thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page before me, so I turn it by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently let go on the page, letting it fly over to her side, and she catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri. It might be a silly fault, but... The main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. You think so? How does she? Well, I guess she's more blunt in a lot of ways. But she also second guesses all of the things that she says and does. Like she's afraid she'll do something wrong. Nice way to... To... Slag her off a bit, but it's not like I could see it in your head or anything. But they're kind of reminiscent of some of your main rhythms. I, I see. You remain silent for a moment as I currently save my game. You remain silent for a moment, but Dolp, that's probably a terrible thing to have in common with her. Uh, that's so embarrassing that you think that. Look, wait, I didn't mean it in a bad way or anything. Sorry, I really didn't know you were self-conscious about that sort of thing. I guess I'm more meant that it's kind of cute. Uh, uh, what are you saying all of a sudden? Uh, e. Okay, everyone. No, uh, I think it's about time we share today's poems with each other. That made her really uncomfortable. We might not have enough time if we wait too long. Uh. Yuri exhales, spared from, finish spared from finishing her fault. Is, is that alright, Yuri? You look kind of down. I'm sorry if you haven't been looking forward to this. Ah, uh, it's not. It's fine. Yuri releases her hand from the book, causing it to close on top of my thumb. Alright. I guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Would you prefer I only read it with you? Um, I, I guess I don't have too much of a preference either way. Hmm. In that case, I'll read a little more tonight. It'll be more fun to read with you after it picks up a bit, you know? That's good reasoning. In that case, feel free to finish the first two chapters in your own time. Alright. I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in a book and slip it back into my bag. And it's poem time, everyone. Way Can't wait for my uh, terrible Morgan Freeman voice. Uh, I'll go I'll go to Monica again first because she seems to be the leader so she can tell me who likes it and so then I'll go to whoever likes it the most next and then work my way through the other two. Hi again, Dolp. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying, so who's ringing me? And uh, with that sorted, sorry. Back to Monica. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Ha 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 ha, I won't count on that. You never know. Want to show you what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Dot dot dot. Alright. Great job, Dolp. I was going ooh in my head while reading it. 
It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. Thanks, Monica. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations from me, though. That way it always counts when I put in some effort. Uh, that's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyways. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism. I like Sayori who likes using simple and direct words to describe happiness and sadness. Yuri likes it when readers are left to derive their own meaning out of it. It's very challenging to write like that effectively. Both allowing people to get something out of it just by the feel. Or letting them deeply analyse all of the nuances. It could take years of practice which I'm assuming Yuri has at this point. It never really asked her. I'm sure I'm nowhere near her level yet. Don't worry so much about that. You do your own thing. Just keep exploring and learning by le trying new things. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Give me a second as I uh, wet my palette. <clears throat> and here comes my really bad Morgan Freeman voice. Save me. The colours, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colours. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. I don't know that word. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. L load me. Sorry. <clears throat> load me. That was weird. That was really strange. Uh, it's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. I, I don't, but I never said that. It's just the kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to spatial words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem about isn't the right question. A poem can be abstracted as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult de decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know what you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tape even about writing? No. What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. I'm, I'm gonna follow her advice, but... What the fuck? What was that about? Cool, so she said Yuri liked it. Or Yuri will like it. So let's go to Yuri next. Let's see what you've written for today. Dot dot dot. More dots. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you... Like it? Dope. How did you pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try giving it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. <laughs> Even her hands appear this way. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine, take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thought. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah, just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid, but seeing as someone motivated by my writing just makes me really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. And besides, people will just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh. Even your close friends? Dot dot dot. Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. Anyway, do you want me to share the, the poem you wrote today? Yeah, I do. 
if it's with you. Oh, that's that's quite cute actually. Uh, ignore the sock, by the way. I never mentioned that when I was reading Monica's poem. I do have a sock on my mic. It 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 helps. Anyway, the raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scattering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread. My subconscious was well aware of the consequences. Well aware that the raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The exciting beauty of my cutting knife was a symptom. The bread, my hunger, curiosity. The raccoon. An image? I can't read script too well, so... The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light of my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. A slice of bread fresh and soft, the raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm really just protecting my emotions onto the really satisfying animal. Easily satisfied animal, sorry. Newly satisfied diarrhea. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me his excitement. A rush of blood. Classic pavilion conditioning. I slice the bread and I feed myself again. Oh, that's quite nice. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what kind of poem this is about. That's right. It's a better closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and convey emotions through them. Yeah. It's, it's, if I take face value, then I can't figure out what this is supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I want to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. In those sorts of things, I'm usually focused upon myself, forced to keep it myself. So, I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? B. Because they're embarrassing, and people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Dolp? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes, and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. Who should I show my poem to next? Uh, let's go Natsuki. She doesn't like Yuri's type of poem, so I feel like going from the one that likes the best to the one that likes it the least is probably the best way to do it. Hmm. I liked your last one, Bell. Uh, really? Well, yeah. I could tell you were a little bit more daring with this one. But you're really not good enough for that yet. It felt flat. That may be true, but I just wanted to try something different. I'm still figuring this all out. I mean, I always like poems that aren't trying too hard. I hate when people try to sound fancy and add more meaning just by using annoying and complicated language. Just make it simple, cute, and to the point. Yuri's head over heels for all this cryptic nonsense, but I see right through that BS. Ha! Making your reader look hard for all this deep meaning is just an excuse to have no meaning at all. I guess that's one way to look at it. Well, everyone has their own opinion. But my opinion is the best opinion. I'm sure you figured that out already. Jesus Christ. She really up herself. God damn. Uh, anyway, here's my poem. Maybe you'll learn something. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favourite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders, and that's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried to not let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. 
It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm going to tell everyone. <laughs> it's just so childish, Natsuki's ones. It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I don't have. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can. Ex sometimes you can. Ex com there. God damn it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree that a subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course, it's about how everyone thinks my. That doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easily. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out they make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Huh, that's funny. You wrote about something similar today. Huh? Did you say Yuri? Yeah. She said her poem was about an unusual hobby of hers. I didn't really get it, but she said something similar to you. That people... Oh god, excuse me. That people shouldn't make each other feel insecure about those things. Really? Well... I mean, Yuri's pretty weird, so I wouldn't doubt that she had some weird hobbies. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. It's not like I would judge her or anything. Natsuki has trouble finding words. I, I guess I should try not to be so mean to her. If she feels insecure about her weird behaviours and stuff. I mean, I always hate people who make me feel insecure. And you made me feel insecure yesterday. But the way you put it, it sounds like she's learned her lesson. Well, I would say so. Even if her writing, writing, even if her writing style was really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like, conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that? I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow, so look forward to it. I will. I will. Right, let's go to Sayori last. I feel like it's gotten dark in here. Oh, I've turned the light off for some reason. Who should I show my poem to next? Say your own. I'm going to go sort my light now. I'll be right back. Right, sorry about that, guys. I'm back. Hopefully, that should start getting brighter now. Don't know why I turned it off in the first place. Dot, dot, dot. Ooh, I like this one, Dolp. It has some nice feelings in it. I'm glad. Still, though, your tone makes it sound like you've liked yesterday's poem better. Hee, hee, hee. I guess you caught me. Sometimes you know me a little too well for my own good. Well, don't just try to be nice about it. If I'm doing a bad job, then I'd rather just hear it. No, no. I still like this one, I promise. You know I wouldn't lie to you, Dop. Never, ever. Yeah, I guess so. What made yesterday's poem so great compared to this one, then? Um. Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. But that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must just be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works, to be honest. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't ever know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. Ugh. Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Oh, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. Of course, that's exactly what I want to do, uh, Sayori. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little bit of both. That's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad. I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help you give that rain cloud a little hug. I make nice happy rainbow. That's quite cute, actually. Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. 
Eh, uh, it is? I'm even getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Dolph. I should go write that down then. You can read my poems now, okay? Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in a bottle. All in a row. My collection makes me a lot of friends. Each bottle is a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a little bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open up and in come my friends. In they come, in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the between my foot, against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts. In shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They were shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. That's, um. <laughs> it's a bit menacing, that, to be honest. Holy crap. So, you did you really write this? Well, of course I did. Didn't tell didn't I tell you yesterday I was gonna write the best poem ever? Well yeah, but I mean I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica told me a whole lot. I'd be really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kinda of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to be you being so cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be more proud of it. Oh, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've got pretty passionate about this, you. Huh. I hope you keep it up. Yeah. Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Uh, don't get ahead of yourself, please. So you always, always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it. No more than a week later. I wonder if this was one of those times. But seeing the passion in our eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. That's the end of the uh, poems for today. And that's also the where I'm going to leave this video. So again, once again, I'm pleading. If you liked the video, please leave a like down below. If you're new to the video, please, subs please hit subscribe if you like the video and like what I do on my channel. The rest of the videos, I didn't mention this in the last one, but the rest of the videos will be in the annotations over there, I believe. Um, I need to get my YouTube positioning in my head now. But um, as usual, uh, we will pick this up in the next video uh, pretty soon. And as usual, I've been Mr. Two Hats and I'll see you all later. Mr. Two Hats signing out.